Excuse us. Pardon me, ma'am. Sorry, sorry. Move it, asshole. Oh, thank God. We got good seats. Damn right we did. What's up? We got the drink. We got the popcorn. And the candy. I think we're ready, man. Hey, guys. Sorry I'm late. The bathroom here is nuts. Oh, my God. You made it. Yay. It's about time, Nathan. Damn. Shh. The movie's starting. I'm Nathan Simmons, and I'm a fucking sex symbol. And I deserve nice things. I have cosmopolitan taste. <laughs> the deviants are already among us, <laughs> waiting for our sons and daughters. <laughs> so he die warnings and repent before it is too late. He may be forgiving God, but every man has got limits. <laughs> for this is the Silver Linings Playlist, a podcast <laughs> that attempts to find the sin in some of cinema's most devil-ridden endings and smite thee down upon the rocks of salvation. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen. We do put the sin in cinema, brother. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All you gotta do is believe me, brother. <laughs> it's, just, it's just turning into a WrestleMania promo. <laughs> oh, welcome, everybody. Uh, thank you for tuning again. Oh, I'm out of breath. <laughs> I know. Thank you for tuning in, everybody. Uh, if this is your first time joining us, uh, I know it's probably confusing uh, mm -hmm. right there at the top, mm -hmm. but this is... That is that is how we start every episode. <laughs> <laughs> yep, regardless of the movie. We always do a prayer, uh, Old That's Testament right. style, chastising the wicked. Testify! <laughs> anyway, here's Wishmaster. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, this week we're talking uh, X. Mm -hmm. Last week we covered men, so now we're, we're officially an X-Men podcast now. <laughs> um, <laughs> Come on, Feige, call us up. <laughs> and we're joined by a guest, a returning guest. I think this is a three-peat, if I'm doing the math right. Yeah. You've seen him on the Super episode. Mm -hmm. He was on the Prisoners episode. Now he's on X, or as I like to think of it as the Super Prisoners X trilogy, sure. which is a Japanese anime I would love to see <laughs> run three seasons. <laughs> oh, we're booing me or are we booing Boo. the guest? Because I was about to say, please welcome Kobe Evans. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, hi. Hi, hi. Kobe. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk to you guys later. I'm <laughs> blessed. Big bless. Did I miss any or is it just Super and Prisoners, right? This is the three. This is the third time. I feel like there's another one. I just. You might be right. Wait, are you the serial killer? <laughs> no, no, that's, that's Josh. Josh. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's Josh. Yeah. Speaking of three peats, this is the third episode in a row I've actually been here for, hey. so that's got to be some kind of record. Shocking. Oh my God. That is a record. That is absolutely a record. Too much of a good thing sometimes, guys. <laughs> so we're talking about X this week. Mm. A little peek behind the curtain. When I have my my template for uh, an episode for the show, when I have all the assets, like all the, the defaults for everything, mm -hmm. I put in the letter X as like a, hey, remember to put the title here. Sure. And then this is very confusing because I, I want to shame any filmmaker who titles the name of their movie, anything that's <laughs> less than three characters uh -huh. making it impossible to search for no you know what that is that's a holdover from the video store days because that's going to be right at the fucking front true of the aisle true <laughs> right at the x aisle is the first one you see there that's right so x mally this is your pick yeah uh, we're doing back-to-back -back picks for you and as I've noted in our text chat, you've only seemed to have picked this season movies for the past two years. Yeah. <laughs> is, there, is there a reason for that? or Recency bias. <laughs> I couldn't be bothered. Yeah, yeah. That's what I had to feel like. I Fair had enough. to feel like it was that. But uh, any particular reason X was on the mind? I looked at what was playing. It was like, all right, that's my list. That's my picks <laughs> for the season. This was like one of the first ones you put on the list this year, I think. I, th I think so. I feel like it was like an early pick. Yeah, yeah. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> it's all a blur at this point. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'll, I'll take your fuck word for it everyone saw this in theaters yes I, no this was another a24 screening room thing for me ah, nice. okay <laughs> i don't i don't think i saw a single a24 movie in theaters this year <laughs> or, or last year my brother that uh, 2022 oh, yeah wow. time is a construct <laughs> this was a first time watch for me oh, I, uh, oh I missed this in theaters and then when i saw that it was on our schedule because we, we started planning the schedule like way out mm -hmm. i just was like okay well i mean uh, appropriately enough i've just been edging myself for this movie mm -hmm. like all season mm -hmm. <laughs> so this was a, this was a first time watch and uh i got a lot i got a lot to talk I, well, I, I got a lot to talk about for sure <laughs> I, I feel like i'm in the same boat as you because uh Kind of spoilers for an upcoming episode. There's uh -huh. a movie that Mally has actually picked from last year as well mm -hmm. <laughs> that uh, I have not seen and I'm holding myself. Uh, I'm saving myself for that movie. Popping yeah. my, my, my cherry with that one. Awesome. I have no idea what movie you're talking I about. Know. I know you don't. I know you don't. <laughs> Kobe, what about you? You you definitely saw this in theaters. I feel like you have to. Uh, I did. I uh, I, 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 feel, I had a feeling. <laughs> I, like I've said before on the shows, I don't know if you guys remember, I don't watch trailers for like anything. That's oh, right. right. So a buddy of mine that still works at the theater was like, hey, I'm going to come watch this movie you want to see it? I was like, sure a24 horror movie that's all i a town down that's all, <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, <laughs> that's all i knew about it mm -hmm. and then a few minutes into it i was like oh 
this is a porn, isn't it? Oh. <laughs> so it was actually the it was the first porn I've watched with subtitles. Mm-hmm. Believe it or not. Oh, you gotta you gotta get those numbers up. If this is your first one, let me open the door for you. <laughs> those are rookie numbers. Just with the subtitles, man. Mm-hmm. Just subtitles. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it was very good. Yep. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Yeah, how did everyone feel about it on this either rewatch or first watch? Just general thoughts. I think it held up really well. Yeah, still loved it. Mm-hmm. I yeah I, I I shut the fuck up Nathan. <laughs> you know I I think it I think it really I'm of two minds about this one. Okay. I, I I have I have some misgivings about it just because it is one of those things where I don't need a slasher movie to have a strong plot or characterization. That's not why I go to slashers. Okay. But if I'm if everything surrounding a movie is talking about how it is quote unquote like an elevated version of that then I I I just feel like I didn't particularly uh get that from this movie. We can get into it as we go along okay. but uh once it like kicks into gear I love this movie. Uh it's just that first half I I don't know. I'm, okay. I'm not 100% sure on. I might be of the exact opposite mind. I think really? the first half of this movie is better than the second half. Interesting. Okay. I, I actually agree with DC. And okay. I hate agreeing with him. <laughs> well, it's I I clocked it on this rewatch. It's ex- it's like almost exactly an hour before the first kill happens. Yes, it is. Yeah. And I don't know. I what I liked about this movie as opposed to other quote unquote slashers mm-hmm. is I like that these characters aren't uh, just complete assholes. Like, yes, oh, they well. have some. I was gonna say, I, I can see that they have flaws. I can see that they may not be likable, but I think they're they they kind of go out of their way to be nice around Howard and Pearl. Man, I don't know, Kid Cudi just doing the Superman pose in it's front great. of the window after fucking. It's great. Yeah, I, I fully disagree. Really? I feel like every person in this movie is a fucking asshole. Wow, almost, almost okay. every single character. Okay, okay. Maybe excepting Jen Ortega, but I, I don't know. Really? <laughs> okay. Well, we'll have to discuss it when we get there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it held up for me. I would love to discuss who everyone's least favorite character is. <laughs> I mean, it was, well, I don't know. I was going to, I was hedging my bets that I feel like it would be the same person. But now, now that everyone is on, on different uh, stances with this movie, I don't know if I can say that now. But uh, uh, what about you, Kobe? Did, this was your second time? I think third or fourth. Okay. Uh, Jesus. Like, I watched it in theaters, obviously. And then whenever it released on like digital or Blu-ray or whatever, I made that round mm-hmm. with all my friends that like really don't watch a ton of stuff in theaters and everything. Mm-hmm. And then uh, I probably watched it one time since then. And then uh, this morning I gave it another rewatch just to catch up on it. All right. Previously on X. <laughs> Well, I'm very excited to to hear all the d- various opinions about this movie now because mm-hmm. I, I thought this would be a generally loved movie. Um, Nathan's always got to be different. <laughs> but let's uh, let's go into all the uh, details surrounding the movie. X. And uh, uh, I didn't like that. What at all. the fuck was that? <laughs> I did, did not like that when you turned what? into a baby for a second. What was that? That's uh, you know, this movie is the title of, of it is uh, X. And I just oh, got, like, I stop. It's hard to pronounce, you know. I hate everything about that. (laughs) So I thought I'd get some assistance with pronouncing the name of the movie, which again is X. And holy um, shit! (laughs) Oh no, that's giving me a fucking Charlie horse in my neck. (laughs) Let's let's, uh, talk some more about it. (laughs) So as we mentioned, the year is last year, 2022. The director is Ty West. Mm-hmm. Hit man, the d- dude is hit or miss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the movie stars uh, Mia Goth, Jenna Ortega, Brittany Snow, Kid Cudi, Martin Henderson, Owen Campbell, Steven Yeur, and James Galen. Could not find a budget for the movie, but it did manage to gross $14 million worldwide and currently sits at a 95% on Rotten Tomatoes. Good damn. That gross isn't bad for a movie that came out, you know, in the pandemic. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. This was one of the first ones i went and saw back in theaters like after restrictions kind of eased up a little bit nice yeah i've seen i I guess this is also a question has everyone seen pearl yes i have not okay i uh, i I want to though Mm -hmm. Uh, it seems the the you might connect more with pearl than this one (laughs) (laughs) well i've seen the trailer and i i just know that it's like it's extensively more camp right Um, like it's got more of like a old hollywood technicolor vibe to it yes Yes. okay i feel like i might groove to that yeah i would say it's probably more campy no I, i will say I didn't dislike this movie. Sure. I just it doesn't it doesn't fully hang together for me in in some ways. Yeah, that's fair. That's a fair assessment. I I didn't care for Pearl that much. Sure. Seems- you didn't pick up what this movie was putting down. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just I I take issue with any movie that uh, calls to attention that it's doing the thing Hitchcock did sure. and is like you shouldn't question it because we're as smart as Hitchcock. <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> I uh I I didn't like Pearl as much as everyone else seemed to. Uh-huh. I just. I don't know. I 
it didn't do it for me, but I am excited for Maxine. Which, oh, yeah. For those of you who don't know, this is now going to be a trilogy. Trilogy. There will be a sequel to X called uh, Maxine. I would have lost my fucking mind if you clicked another one and it was like, Maxine. <laughs> I, thought, I thought about getting uh, various reads of just the letter. X. But uh, oh, I thought this one stop. was the best one to go with. So, <laughs> What is it from? Uh, it's literally, if you just look up uh, how to pronounce the letter, X. you can get a website <laughs> where <laughs> users will submit how to pronounce the letter. X. Uh-huh. And I thought this was the best sound to go I cr- Cringe every time I hear it. <laughs> Cringe. Like, it literally gives me a cramp in my neck. It's a hard title to say, so I needed some assistance. Oh, man. So- I can hate you, DC. <laughs> to me, my X-Men. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't we uh, revisit the trailer? Because I haven't seen this since the movie came out. If I if I recall correctly, the trailer has like the last shot of the movie in it, probably, probably. or at least the last line of the movie, probably. But let's let's go for it. Let's find. Well, yeah, let's find out. Farmer's daughter, take one. I need to be famous, Wayne. All the best people are. There ain't nobody else out there like you. You know why? Why? From the composer who scored Law and Order Special Victims Unit. (laughs) I feel like every horror movie's got the long haired guy with glasses, Mm -hmm. and I dig it. Oh, are you talking about RJ, RJ. the fucking douchey cinematographer? I thought that was Eric from the Evil Dead remake. Right? That's what I'm saying. (laughs) That's exactly why I brought it up. I was like, this motherfucker, this dude has not aged. He looks exactly like him. Yep, that's exactly why I brought it up. He looks just like that guy, who is apparently like a stand in yeah, for Ty West, like, oh, kind of, he kind of looks like that. Well, he's kind of written like it, too. <laughs> that, too. It would explain why I fucking hate RJ so much. <laughs> much I want to be in the movie. Well, you can't. The story can't just change midway through. If Daddy catches us, there's no telling what he might do. I'll cut that dick off, apparently, according to that shit. <laughs> My wife. It happens after dark. Hell yeah. I love this trailer. It's a great trailer. People's eyes are gonna pop out of their damn skulls when they see this. Love that shot. Are you all right? No. One of the boys found this inside. What do you think is on it? I see one goddamn fucked up horror picture. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great, great way to end the trailer. I uh-huh. love it. Uh-huh. Huh. Yeah, oh yeah, that's the first time you've seen it, huh? Yeah. <laughs> huh. Definitely seems more thriller suspenseful than sure. what the movie puts out. Like as far as like it seems more uh burner, just, burner, yeah. burner, <laughs> burner. I, I I think it's pretty consistent with the tone of the movie. I I don't know. I feel like this movie is like a fun time. Like it's trying to put off those vibes, mm-hmm. especially with the actual shooting of the porn scenes. But yeah. Yeah, I think once that first kill happens and it becomes just a kind of traditional slasher, that's where I'm least interested in it. And see, to me, there there are interesting character moments still kind of wrapped up in there. Like, I love that conversation between between Pearl and Howard, mm-hmm. even though it, it, you know, it ends with a comically disgusting sex scene. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. uh, I just, I, I do think that's a well-acted, well-written sequence. See, on this rewatch, I didn't find it as funny. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I get the first time you see it, it's like, what are we doing here? But sure. <laughs> this time I just felt sad. Like, mm-hmm. I felt No, so- <laughs> I, I agree. Like, there were moments in this movie where I truly felt bad for Pearl, mm-hmm. even though she's this, like, monster keeping men in her basement and all this stuff. But, like, yeah, you, you you do genuinely feel terrible for her and it ties really nicely mm-hmm. into the you know the the themes of alienation and, and fear of aging throughout the movie. And Which shout out Mia Goth for fucking the double duty she's yes. pulling in this movie. She's unbelievable in this movie. Unbelievable. The voice is so good. Yeah. I will say I missed on my first watch, I missed the uh kind of little reveal. Sure. Yep. 
where it shows like the young photo, the young version of her of Pearl in the photo. Uh-huh. So like I had no idea that was Mia Goth until the fucking credits. I'm Same. Like, Wait, uh, what? Yeah. Same. I don't think I had any idea till the, the second rewatch. Yeah, it's it's actually a brilliant way to do as like a, a narrative device too, right? Of mm-hmm. like I used to be just like you. I sure. was young like you. You're something special. I mean, she she even says like she reminds me of the what I used to have, mm-hmm. you know. And and that there's that really interesting moment where. Pearl's watching them film mm-hmm. and you know we we flash between Pearl and and Maxine yep. in the scene and I just ah, it's fan- it's fantastic. I will say when you rewatch this movie after having seen Pearl it does put into perspective a lot of things mm-hmm. and it makes Pearl a much less sympathetic character. A little bit. That's what I've heard. That's another reason why I'm curious to see it. I don't I'm wondering if it'll like enrich this story for me or mm-hmm. change how I feel about it in some way. Well that's that's the interesting part is like you could watch this movie and be like I feel bad for this old woman she's <laughs> you know she's clearly just wants the affection of her husband right. she's longs for that physical touch but then you see pearl and you're like oh this woman's a monster like, yeah no i fire as soon as the credits rolled on this i fired up the trailer for pearl and i'm like oh she's about to like throw her dad in the lake it's a lot that movie is a lot it's it's not a bad movie uh-huh. i just did not jive with it as much as this one pearl also raises many questions about howard uh-huh. in this movie as well uh-huh. oh really uh, okay yeah interesting i don't know if it's necessarily a spoiler but howard's almost a non character in Pearl. <laughs> yeah. Like it's he definitely has some some splaining to do, I would say. He's also got uh, his makeup isn't nearly as good as hers. Yeah. Like there are shots of this movie where I was like this is like Victor Crowley from the Hatchet movie. <laughs> That's <laughs> exactly <laughs> what I wrote down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we got to talk about Steven Yeur because mm-hmm. I was not very familiar with him. He's 65 at the time of making this movie. Uh-huh. And he's so good as Howard, yeah. but do you guys recognize where he is from? I uh, no. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, Secret of the Use. Uh, unfortunately, no. Oh, bummer. But uh, it was a long shot. But He is in almost all of the Lord of the Rings movies as various orcs. Oh. However, he has he plays two very big orcs, one in the two towers. He is the guy that chases Merry and Pippin through the forest, the what about their legs? Oh. They don't need those guys. Wow. Okay. And he is in Return of the King. He's the one that finds Frodo after he's been... Uh, stung by Shelob and says, this one ain't dead. And oh, wow. Yeah. I mean, it's New Zealand, so it yes. makes sense. Oh, shit. He was in Deathgasm. <laughs> Which, I mean, shout out for how small New Zealand is. They really just have any and all landscapes you could ask for. It mm-hmm. looks so, it's remarkable how much this looks like Texas. Yeah. Like, it's really well done. It's insane. Where was that filmed at? It was filmed in New Zealand. New Zealand. Texas filmed in New Zealand, yeah. Fuck off. Yeah. <laughs> right? Doesn't it just look like Texas, though? Like, it's yeah. got the swamp and everything. No, to the point where I was like, oh, they just, did they use the same farm from Texas Chainsaw? Yeah, like? so many, so many nods to Texas Chainsaw in this movie. It's, uh-huh. in, it's, it's incredible. Can we say Texas Chainsaw Massacre and not Texas Chainsaw? Right. That movie was fucking terrible. Oh, absolutely. Well, I, Texas Chainsaw is clearly Romania the whole time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like in the midst of the pandemic too. Like, mm-hmm. like this was 2020 they, sh- they shot this. Yep. So New Zealand was fucking locked down. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, New Zealand was also, wasn't it one of the first countries to kind of like declare zero cases? Yeah. Because <laughs> they actually did follow lockdown protocols. It's amazing what you could do when you're not a selfish asshole. And you just uh-huh. Ty West wrote Pearl when they were, when they got there, they had to quarantine, everyone had to quarantine oh, for two right. weeks. And yeah. so he was like, all right, fuck it. I'm just going to write the prequel god i want that work ethic yeah. I, I really do where i'm just like oh man i gotta take it easy i guess i'll make another movie uh-huh but no this this movie's got homages to a lot of great slashers and uh-huh. horror movies in the past i mean there's tons of psycho nods there's mm-hmm. shining nods there's texas chainsaw massacre nods <laughs> is it a nod when you say we're doing the thing like that movie you guys like <laughs> yeah well I, i'm not mostly in like the camera work sure, and sure. certain shot composition no you're there. absolutely right not a single reference to the shape of things though <laughs> not that i could well <laughs> missed opportunity there is uh, some package grabbing i That's will say true. oh so, fuck you're right yeah maybe my favorite line in the entire movie it's so good i feel how hard i am <laughs> (laughs) (laughs) that's the thing is like there are some really like sad and somber moments in this movie there's all the arguments that seem to like contradict each other and Mm -hmm. then we have a moment like that and i i couldn't help but feel like i want more of yes in this movie that's what i mean by the characters are like that i don't necessarily need to see them all get butchered at the end i sure i mean i get that it's the whole point but I feel like this is not like what you would experience in like the early, like a Freddy versus Jason or something. Where right. Like all these characters are terrible people. Right. They all deserve whatever they got coming to them. I, but most like, of them are interesting characters yes. at the very least. Yeah. Yes. But like I, every time one of them comes across, 
Howard or Pearl, they uh-huh. do kind of go out of their way. That's like, true. Yeah. Kid Cudi offers to help find Pearl un- unprompted. Mm-hmm. Mia Goth drinks down all that lemonade. Mm-hmm. Which, how, guys, how fucking good is an ice cold glass of lemonade? It's, oh, it's delicious. Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. Had me one the other day. I tell you what, it's better than uh, a carton of milk. Yeah. yeah. You got to stop picking movies like this, man. I'm getting it. <laughs> Ashley and I watched this last night, and when he pulled the milk carton out of the fridge, I said, God damn it, Mally. <laughs> <laughs> I, can't, I can't take it anymore. I can't do it. Y'all keep letting me pick. That's I don't know true. what the fuck you want That's from true. me. <laughs> we might have to reevaluate how we pick movies next season. I don't know. There was luckily there was no milk in 365 days, and it was maybe the best <laughs> oh. thing about that movie. Oh, there, there was, was some milk. There was some <laughs> there cream. Was you walked right into that one, dude. <laughs> I guess. Uh, anyways, let's talk uh, some more about X. And what? <laughs> <laughs> One of my favorite things about this movie is the way it starts, which uh-huh. is a four, a fake 4-3 aspect ratio to get you in the mood mm-hmm. before rolling out of that barn door and expanding into the widescreen. It's such a little touch. It's good. It's good. Zack Snyder's Texas Chainsaw Massacre. <laughs> It's so good. There'd be a lot more slow motion if that was the case. <laughs> sure. And I, I'm pretty sure the gator would have entered the speed force. But we'll, who kn- who knows? Who knows what would have happened there? But no, it's it's a really great opening. And it's the, the, the camera moves so like slowly and methodically that I was certain we were watching a POV shot. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> it's so good. It's it's incredible. Uh, one thing I'll say, too, about this opening scene is we I love this type of police car uh-huh. like we got to get back to this design this was peak design yeah i don't want to see another fucking dodge charger no no more chargers no more mustangs as police cars it's such bullshit i like these boxy old things from the 70s and 80s it's perfect design sure love seeing that i loved the uh the the, the sticker on the side mm-hmm. the uh, plowing service mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so, so many good bumper stickers in this movie mm-hmm. uh, another thing we got to retire is the you got to come see this line uh-huh, sure it's it's too much now it's getting too much i don't I, I just say the thing you're a police officer hey we found a dead body down here right i don't think the sheriff needs a surprise but yeah, so do you guys like this call opening or do you think it's unnecessary? What? Well, I, I think it's a good way to start. I think it's both. Yeah. I think it's not entirely necessary. I, I don't know. I'm I'm getting a little tired of the framing device of uh, let's let's show the aftermath, then jump back so that we can get there. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know that it's an, it's entirely necessary, but I think it's well done. Yeah, yeah. I, I do have questions about is, is that is the one sermon just playing on a loop on that channel? Because it's the exact same one each time. <laughs> Bro, have you been to Texas? <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. I, I was going to say, I don't know if, if this is supposed to be live or if this is a pre-recorded thing. Uh-huh. I'm assuming pre-recorded, but yeah, they just play that shit on a loop on, uh-huh. on like a local public access TV because every there's no other TV channels playing in this town. No. It's all this guy. <laughs> even the even the uh, gas station attendant mm-hmm. is just like, I really got to find out what he's got to say about sinners. Mm-hmm. I, I haven't heard before this is new information to me <laughs> right amen i want to talk about the transitions in this movie yes because i think it plays into something that rj's character says later on which mm. is i'm doing something avant-garde with the editing i'm mixing <laughs> things out of order and sure. then every time we transition from one thing to another we kind of overlap yeah in an interesting way i've never seen anything like that well it's always that three count right yeah. like we, we jump back and forth a couple of times mm-hmm. yeah i don't think i've ever seen anything like that before it was very interesting it was interesting but i i kept wanting it to have a point yeah. and i don't know that it did other than like vibes yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. which I, I mean is is a valid point also I'm, I'm the guy who brought mandy on the show so whatever <laughs> yeah yeah i mean that's fucking ty west though that's true I, I will say every time i think about ty west i just imagine him as his character from your next absolutely <laughs> yes sure like that's him to me mm-hmm I need to rewatch Your Next. I haven't seen it in a while, but I remember liking it a lot. Oh, Your Next is so fucking good. Mm -hmm. Much better than his last movie, The Sacrament. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just kept feeling like RJ was 100% a stand-in for Ty West. Oh, he absolutely was. I mean, he's constantly saying things like, oh, I'm going to make this better than the source material. I'm going to, you know, or I'm going to transcend the genre to give you something that's really uh, you know interesting and i'm not making porn i'm making cinema right and not for nothing but every time i they they would show the porn i was like this movie's gonna be terrible Uh, i mean uh, (laughs) have you ever seen a penis through the lens of a kaleidoscope (laughs) which the show hannibal actually did a sex scene like that's right (laughs) i i don't know i don't i don't think it would be a uh, like a debbie does dallas or anything like that but i think this like I don't know. I far less for like the porn. I guess because I'm so. In- it's no deep throat. No, uh-huh. no, and, and I'm so inundated with 20th century, like 21st century porn that like <laughs> really, yeah. like that people just making you watch it all the time. Yeah, yeah. I'm just inundated. <laughs> I'm like Alex in the Clockwork Orange. Just I can't get away from it. 
<laughs> but no, like I, there was something kind of nice about seeing just like this very pedantic pedestrian, like interesting camera work kind of porn. Like I thought it would be interesting. Sure, but it, but then it was it, it's so strange because then they will do these extreme close ups on like Britney Snow mm-hmm. giving giving a performance. Oh, and, it's so and it's, funny! It, it's so interesting. That's the only time in this movie she works for me, honestly. Oh, really? <laughs> See, I, I I could not stand her performance in this movie. I think she rides the line so well yeah. between being like absolutely too much and just enough i like, just i don't know i see that's how i felt about cuddy because mm. he's he's like this sort of inscrutable badass who has, i love kid cuddy in this movie i fucking so love good him. has moments of like sweetness and then i felt like britney snow was like a cartoon character well that was that's that's her that is her character she's sure. a cartoon character like, but doesn't it feel at odds with everybody else though um, like everybody else's performances bro have you been to texas <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. I think she works well as like this, like uh, like Texas stripper. I mean, this is a strip club that she works at. Sure. That Martin Henderson runs is in the, like just the reveal that is in the industrial area. There's seagulls and shit. It's so <laughs> it is really funny. Which did you notice the billboard on the outside of the club? Like, oh yes, the alligator literally foreshadows her death. Uh-huh. Oh yeah, there's a bunch of stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Almost every character in the movie foreshadows their death either through a line of dialogue or through a framing device or something like that. It's really incredible. But no, I think your character is just, like I said, it's just enough hmm. to be believable without being like over the top mean girlsy. That's how I see her anyway. Okay. But the part you you referenced about her like putting on a performance is what I think makes her character. Yeah, no, I, when she's in the movie, it's like, oh my God, this is an actor. Mm-hmm. And I think that's really an interesting choice. Yeah. I just, it's so, <laughs> there's such a weird disconnect outside of that. And I don't know. It's like it's, during her sex scene with Kid Cudi yeah. when he's like, telling RJ, hey man, you point the camera, let me just handle the phone. <laughs> and she laughs. And then the second the camera gets back on her, she's right back to the performance. That was really good. Yeah. That's what I mean. Like, I okay. think her character knows exactly what she is. That's interesting. Okay. And I think, I think that's great. Well, then I will keep that in mind if I ever rewatch it, because mm-hmm. that's, I like, no, I, that's, a, that's an interesting thing to think about. And we got to talk about Martin Henderson, who, <laughs> man, I cannot believe he's only 20 years older than he was in the ring, because he looks exactly the same. Yeah. This dude, holy shit, the reveal of him in his little tiny underwear later on in the movie, god <laughs> damn, it was incredible to see. This dude is in shape looks amazing never in my life have i seen underwear like that no it's like a thong in the back and a cock sock in the front it's <laughs> damn near borat's uh, green underwear almost it's just missing the shoulder straps now imagine the paul rudd scene where he crawls across the bed in shape of things but he's wearing those underwear oh. <laughs> oh. the shape of rudd <laughs> <laughs> He's 20 years older than Mia Goth, uh-huh. and man, it was, I don't know. Speaking of, of performances, Mia Goth in this movie, doing double duty. Yeah. <laughs> duty. <laughs> Love her her reveal here with the push-in yeah. as she's snorting a huge line of coke. Like, one thing I'll say that this movie gets right that a lot of horror movies that are period pieces don't is they get the sensibilities of making movies in that time perfectly. Uh-huh. Like, all we did in 70s were push-ins and z- zoom outs mm-hmm. very far. All we did. Were you fucking there? Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm a lot older than I. I'm a Martin Henderson in this situation. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of underwear are you wearing right now? <laughs> <laughs> when when Mia Goth goes to Skinny Dip mm-hmm. and she walks onto the pier and it does a huge zoom out, that's exactly what the kind of stuff we were doing in the 70s. Yeah. So, like, the way that they reveal her character here with a huge push in as she's doing a line of coke, I thought it was incredible. <laughs> oh, I, I mean, whenever there's a couple of moments when Pearl like appears behind somebody mm-hmm. and will do a push in and then scooch to the left to get her in frame. Uh-huh. And I, I just I love that. And that's the kind of shit West was doing with like House of the Devil, which mm-hmm. I, I, I still think looks amazing. Mm. I actually I actually like House of the Devil. Yeah, me too. I haven't seen that one. It's a real slow burn, okay. but it's uh, it, it's worth it. it yes. What? Well, it's interesting enough that he said he made this movie because he was tired of people calling his movie slow burns and then the first kill doesn't happen for the first hour. Right. Congratulations, Ty. You played yourself. I think the pacing, the pacing honestly works very well for this movie. I'm okay with the first kill coming an hour in. Oh, yeah. That's that doesn't that's not what bothers me at all. Sure. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's all the graphic nudity that really bothers Nathan. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm a real prude. <laughs> yeah. Nathan can't watch movies with uh, X. Oh. the title or it's rated that. So X. you every time I, I forget. <laughs> Get about that. I mean, That's what I do. I'm waiting for my moment. Son of a bitch. It's- no, I, I think uh, this movie it knows what it's doing in terms of the pacing, though, uh-huh. because when it does become that slasher and things switch, it is 
I mean, as much as you may hate this, it is kind of like that psycho thing that they're talking about where sure. the story can't change halfway through, uh-huh. Wait, like, which is why I like the character of RJ. I find him an incredibly annoying and a hypocritical uh, but I fucking hate RJ. <laughs> I do like that he's kind of the audience surrogate as well as Ty West's surrogate of like telling you this is what's going to happen. Right. Like this movie is very transparent about what it is, what it's going to do, what it is doing than a lot of horror movies. Well, it, and it's that thing that t- Ty West is like exploring this idea of this is like the wild west of pornography right mm-hmm. like no pun intended <laughs> wild wild west <laughs> jim west desperado <laughs> but we're trying to figure out like you know who's manipulating hugh who no not gonna <laughs> finish it all right i know that whole fucking song um but like yeah it's like you're saying like rj at least calls out the hypocrisy even though he's a hypocrite himself but like wayne is like giving them this illusion of agency just to like meet his own uh, his own needs mm-hmm. and I, yeah i think that's you mentioned deep throat earlier which is like a movie movie that was a crossover success and then it was years later that everyone found out the star had been taken advantage of yeah and and i it's it's when it starts to approach those like conversations that i i, I think it's really interesting here but i feel like everybody's morals and politics kind of change from scene to scene. <laughs> sure. Are you talking about when Wayne and RJ are talking outside? Yes. Yeah. Sorry. I didn't mean to jump all the way ahead, but yeah, no, no, that's fine. Cause I think that's a perfect scene. A that exemplifies the problem with the character of RJ, but yeah. also, I don't know. I, I do see Wayne as being like a, a enterprise man. Like he wants, you know, he's got dollar signs in his eyes, sure. but I think he is, I, I don't know. I find his character to be very interesting because he's not forcing, quote unquote, these women to do these things. Like Brittany Snow is very adamant about doing this. But he is he is putting everyone in a situation where they like he wants it to be like when when Lorraine starts asking if she can film, you know, a scene, mm-hmm. he sort of is just like, you know, he gives this illusion of, well, I'm looking out for everybody. Yeah. But then he takes he takes RJ outside and says, you know, none of them are nice girls. I, OK, I'll give you that. But I, what I was going to say is I I think Wayne, when she when Jen Ortega says that I want to be in the movie, uh-huh. he does not once say, well, all right, let's fucking do it. Let's go. He sure. waits for this conversation with RJ and them to happen and then smartly says, let's go outside and discuss this before we say something we regret. Right. And then the line after that that I fucking love mm-hmm. is I I've been 24 and you haven't been 42 or whatever he says. It is a good line. It's a great line. Yeah. And then he puts in perspective. He's like, look, man, she's if she wants to do this, it, it, she's going to do it whether you want to or not. You know, and which I think is true. Yeah. But but he also turns that into a you she's going to do it with as many guys as she wants. He, like, he sort of turns it into like, if you don't let her do this, then she's going to turn into like this monster or whatever. Yeah. And I, 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 he's. I, I see what you're saying, but I think at the end of the day, Wayne is still like, like grossly opportunistic. Oh yeah, no, no, he is definitely like a gross character. But yeah. what I'm saying is, I think honestly, he's kind of one of the more noble, gross characters that mm. you could like. There could be a very, very troubling character in Wayne, like a very. Oh, I mean, yeah, he's not, he's not like violent. Yeah, so I he guess could that... be violent. He could yeah. be, you know, like this could be a boogie night situation or oh, something yeah, like that. Sure. Like it could have gone off the rails real quick, and that's what I mean by like I think all these characters have have positive traits to them and they kind of subvert what you would expect from something like that like kid cuddy never comes out and says hey man she wants to be in the movie uh, let me fuck her right. he's like well this is what it is he's like well this is your decision yeah. and and then you know if i'm getting paid for it they kind of yeah. do give her the agency of like Ooh. well if she wants to be in the movie i'm not going to say you can't be in the movie sure but rj can't just say i don't want you to do this because it would upset me he has to say she's not like the other girl she's right. a nice girl <laughs> and that's the hypocrite part of him of like Dude, you know you're doing a porn. You can try and elevate as much as you want. But you're gonna but you're gonna look down on everybody while you're doing exactly, it. Exactly. Exactly. Well, and it's like guys who it's like people it's like filmmakers who say, Oh, I don't like horror. I just did it because it was an easy sell yeah. or it was cheap to make. Yes. Right. Yes. Well, which we dealt with in uh, Halloween six. Right. With uh Mr. Chappelle, Joe Chappelle, yeah. I don't know. I, I think that conversation is probably the best part of the movie. Like, yeah, it's loaded with nuance for sure. Mm-hmm. And, and in fact, the whole cabin scene loads. <laughs> God damn it. The <laughs> pre landslide and post landslide. I think that whole scene is the best part of the movie. Mm. And that's right before things switch, yes. which is when I so- start to lose interest. <laughs> sure. Kobe, you haven't said much. What do you think about all that? <laughs> I'm just taking it all in, man. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, sorry. I'm, I'm so not trying to like <laughs> railroad this at all. No, I think there's so many moving parts with each character. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And like Wayne, I think is definitely just the the older money man, mm-hmm. strip club owner, yeah. just taking advantage of. He doesn't care who gets hurt in anything. I think. Yeah, he's a producer. Uh, <laughs> well, okay, that's an interesting way of putting it. That he doesn't care who gets hurt. I kind of disagree. That's what I'm saying. I think he like when Jen Ortega 
comes to the cabin mm-hmm. and he's sitting there in his underwear and she's like, I can't find RJ. You almost expect a character like that to just be like, well, it's all right. Come on inside. But like You don't think he's trying to protect his investment? I think it's that. I think it's much less of like, he could be a total creep right there. Yeah. And he's not. And I, I do like that he, he never tries once to hit on her. That's he never true. once says... Like, that's what I'm saying. These characters could be a lot worse. But, like, that's... We're saying he's a good guy because of the bare minimum. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but that's that's my, that's why I find him an interesting character because uh-huh. it's not like what you, a, a character like this you would see in other horror movies. Sure. Like, yes, he's he's only a good character because he's not a bad person. Right. Like, in a, yeah. In a, in, a less, in a less nuanced movie, yeah. he probably would have been like, why don't we do some drugs? And yes. yeah, 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 yeah. Why don't we do some test scenes first? Why don't we you know, get like, a date? Why don't we get a date? Yeah. No, he's not doing any of that, which is but I, I like this character. Okay. I think we talked about this earlier. We said we all had a character we di- we thought was the worst. It, it's got to be RJ, right? For me, it is. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah no, R- RJ drove me uh, bonkers. I, I think I was referring to Brittany Stowe's performance. Oh, but okay. yeah. R- okay. RJ, I do think, is maybe the worst character in the movie. It, he's definitely the worst. And it's unfortunate because I do like him up until... I mean, the, the when they, when the landslide finishes, mm-hmm. and there's just that beat, and then Jim Ortega says, I'm going to be in the movie. How do we <laughs> feel about the landslide scene? I think it's great. I, I'm here for it. It's such a bold choice. And I mean, to put Landslide in your movie, sure. you're really risking it. <laughs> Would it have been better with a different song? I, I think Landslide like, thematically kind of fits. Oh, no, it absolutely. It absolutely fits the themes of the movie. But I, I'm more I'm more so wondering, like, th- th- we've got split screens that are just dividing one image, which I thought was kind of odd. Sure. <laughs> and then, I don't know, there, there's just a couple of, I don't know, it, it, it just feels like it comes out of left field for me, even though I, I like the scene as an oasis in the movie. Sure. I just don't know that it necessarily connects to what's around it. No, it's Fleetwood Mac. It's not, o- it's not <laughs> Oasis. Sorry. <laughs> like, would it, would it have been better with an acoustic performance of WAP? Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my God. Wet ass Pearl. I would, lo- I would pay money to see that. <laughs> Holy shit. I know. I think that scene is beautiful. No, I think it's great. It's well done. Yeah. yeah. At that point, Pearl's seen uh, Mia Goth in the porn and she's tried to come on to Howard and he's, he's rejected her. Uh huh. And it's just her taking off the makeup and realizing, like, this is just what I am now. Yeah. Meanwhile, you've got these young, fuckable people <laughs> that are just, like, in their prime, at the peak of their sexuality. Uh-huh. And, like, she, Brittany Snow was saying, hey, even we are going to get older. Like, yeah. we're going to get... Uh, we're going to catch up to you. Well, and it helps that that's one of the greatest songs ever written. So. Mm-hmm. And it's a heartbreaking scene. It, even knowing what I know about Pearl, that scene is heartbreaking. And so, yeah, that was, as I was watching it, I, I was thinking, okay, so what are we saying? Are we saying like, you're going to become a monster if you get, and it, it helps that, you know, then the rest of the movie happens. Sure. And I'm like, oh, okay. Now, now, I, now I see that there are different circumstances. <laughs> On the rewatch too, once you know, after you've seen Pearl, you're like, oh, sure. okay, th- this song, yeah, it makes a lot of interesting. <laughs> Okay. It subverts what you're expecting on that that front of it. But does that make it a? <laughs> I, I, that's fine. I I get your struggles with it. I totally do. <laughs> no, I my 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 question is: Do does it mean that X is good if you have to watch another movie no. to give it context? No, no, no. I think <laughs> I think Pearl just changes how you view it. I don't think it gives okay. you anything new from X itself, other than the character of Pearl. Like, okay, okay. I see what I you're saying. Know. Yeah, that's the way I see it. Maybe maybe Mally will disagree or Kobe will disagree, but that's how I see it. Like I like these movies. I, I like this movie movie better than Pearl, mm-hmm, but yeah. Pearl doesn't necessarily completely change how I view it. It okay. changes only aspects of her character. Gotcha. Yeah. And raises a few questions about Howard. Yes, absolutely. Will watching Pearl change how I feel about Ninja Turtles 2? Oh, see, that, that, that does put it to context, a whole different thing there. It, oh, okay. yeah. yeah, it does change. Yeah. yeah. And also... Yeah, yeah. That's right. <laughs> also, somehow Kid Cudi is playing two different guitar parts at once in this, uh, to this before. <laughs> well, no, yeah. he's, he's, good. he's doing a Chet Atkins technique. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's right. He was using his dick. <laughs> Hammer claw with the thumb. Gotcha, gotcha. All right, so we're, we're kind of already deep into the movie, but let's, let's go back a little bit. So yeah. they're going to shoot this porn at this ranch that Wayne has... Uh, oh, we're going all the way back to the fucking beginning. <laughs> <laughs> that, that Wayne has rented. So the movie's directed by Ty West. Mm-hmm. And the movie's called X. And Fuck. we... Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm coming around to it. <laughs> uh, Wade rents this little side house, uh, and he only tells Howard, "Hey, I'm just gonna be staying there." He shows up with a bunch of people. Uh-huh. And Howard's like, "I don't remember you saying you're gonna bring a bunch of people and this camera equipment and stuff." Oh, let me sweeten the deal. He tries to sweeten the deal by slipping him some more money, and Howard's <laughs> got a great line, which is, "I don't think I like you." Wade. <laughs> I was so I was so 
puzzled why they like they don't show Howard's face directly until they're finally like in the side house. Mm-hmm. And that was when I was like, I, for, I was like, is he like, is his face like fucked up? Is he <laughs> scary? And then they show him and I'm like, oh, he's a Dick Tracy villain. Yeah, his face <laughs> is, is pretty fucked up. Absolutely. <laughs> Motherfucker looks like a piece of leather with a mouth. <laughs> <laughs> the real leather face. And, and it is interesting. Speaking of leather face. That this movie takes place five years after the release of that movie, uh-huh. and it's in Texas. I don't know. I felt like that that weight of that was very apparent to this movie, obviously because of the setting and everything. But right. like, we're still in that time frame, but when this was in the you know in the pop culture and the zeitgeist and everything. Sure. Well, and this is unabashedly you know an homage to, oh, yeah. to Texas Chainsaw Massacre. But oh, like, yeah. I think um, I, I. But no, I just I, I I think you're right. Like these are these you have these characters who are aware of the tropes of horror movies, whether or not they like address them. Mm-hmm. And I think that's really interesting. Like when you watch earlier horror films, you have all of these characters who behave like they've never seen a horror movie before because they haven't. Right, and that's that's kind of why I like this this like crop of of characters yeah. because. This could easily become like a Scream 2 situation. Sure. You know I mean, You're like where these characters are way too self-aware. A perfect movie. Absolutely. <laughs> are way too self-aware. Well, I mean, in a deleted scene, they do mention the title of the porn they're filming is the Tex-Ass Chainsaw oh, Massacre. Oh, they, oh, really? Is that true? No. No, uh, <laughs> Wouldn't that not be true? <laughs> I mean, that's fucking headcanon for sure. <laughs> we haven't really talked about it that much, but Jen Ortega uh-huh. having a stellar year in 2022, huh? Absolutely. Like this film, Scream 5, she's got that Wednesday show. Mm-hmm. She did that Foo Fighters movie. Mm-hmm. And did anyone see that Foo Fighters movie? I, I saw that in the theater. <laughs> you did? I did too, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I did. Is it is it really is it that bad? It was fun. It's a it's a tough sit. Okay. It's fun, but like it is about forty five minutes too long. Sure, sure. Okay. Unfortunately, the Taylor Hawkins part was the best part. I was gonna say like all respect to Taylor Hawkins. Oh, uh, true, true. Its runtime rivals that of Babylon. Oh my God, really? <laughs> I don't know if that's actually true. I didn't see it. Oh, okay. No, I uh, this was I never I was not familiar with Jenna Ortega prior to Scream uh, last year, Same. and I, I and I kept I left that movie wishing she had. Been been the main character yep. like yeah. she's fantastic yep i'm excited for her to come back in the new one i only knew her as the girl that my wife points out every time we go to this one coffee shop oh, oh yeah she would just be like that's the girl from you and i'd be like cool i never fucking watched that show oh she was on you <laughs> yeah apparently no no she's not on you she's in X. Uh, <laughs> two different shows about two different, <laughs> different letters, letters. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> This is the part where I started to fall in love with her because of the scene with her and Britney Snow at the gas station. Uh huh. When she's like, Do you help out with uh, your boyfriend on all his movies sometimes? sometimes. And then. <laughs> Britney Snow points to Kid Cutting shows as he's your boyfriend, and Britney Snow says, "Sometimes, yeah, <laughs> oh yeah, like mocks her little act, her little voice." I, yeah, I love it, I, but I don't think she's mocking her. I think uh-huh. she's like throw it, like yeah, absolutely, sometimes. Oh no, yeah, she's <laughs> yeah, that's funny. I, I don't know. I love both of these characters so much. I like that they call her Church Mouse because she doesn't say anything. Uh, that's, yeah, that's great. Oh, Church Mouse, so you can talk. She even <laughs> like has Britney Snow character is even not just that you know ditzy blonde stripper. Mm-hmm. She does have some insight into this whole thing, like when she suggests. Hey, if you aim the camera right, you can make it seem like he's filling up the tr- van with his dick. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what you should be doing. Uh-huh. I love that. I love that she like knows what she's talking about. Very savvy. It's with his cock. I know. I, the word cock is is a heavy on the tongue. I don't, I'd rather what? say dick. <laughs> really? Cock is way more fun to say. I oh, would argue. fun to say. That's what I'm saying. But it's 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 heavy. You find cock to be heavy on the tongue, huh? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. I do, but that's a story for another time. Hey. <laughs> I'm trying, I'm trying to think of how to, how to segue out of that. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> the shape of dings. <laughs> so, I'm, I know I'm jumping ahead, sure. but when Ginny Ortega's character, Lorraine, uh-huh. decides she wants to be in the movie, yes. who saw, are we on RJ's side or are we not? No, absolutely not. Good, because RJ's a piece of shit. Well, I would be on RJ's side if he was transparent with his actual feelings about it. Yes. I, I and, and I would understand if RJ's whole deal was, I don't want you to be taken advantage of sure. or, or, hey, you're my girlfriend. I don't want to see that happen. Sure. But it, but it is, it is the way he portrays it as a fully like kind of selfish thing. Yeah. I am on the side of her wanting to make that decision for herself. Yes. But I also am just like, I'm also thinking in the terms of this is a porn set in the 1970s. There's absolutely no way you're safe. Yep. And also, I, look, Jenna Ortega has a baby face. And yeah. it just makes me really uncomfortable. It's Agreed. uncomfortable. <laughs> it's uncomfortable. And she, she, she is only like, I think as of today, she's only like 21, 22, right. I think. I could be wrong about that. But yeah, I agree. Well, see, even though I dislike RJ the most, mm-hmm. sure. I resemble him the most because I also cry in the shower when my girlfriend <laughs> decides to leave me Man, to be porn. That is the one shower oh. I was like, he just liked me for real. I, just, I was 
was thinking of, of Chris Tucker and Friday. I'm like, oh, he's going to cry in the shower. Like, that's all I thought of. Right. Like, you, you can't cry in the shower, dude. You can't do that. No, I I think when she comes out and says, I want to be in the movie, it mm-hmm. is kind of a gas moment. Right. But I love that it's not just her wanting to do it out of spite. Totally. Like she has that conversation with Mia Goth and Brittany Snow and even Kid Cudi of like, don't you guys believe in love? Yes, we believe in love, but this is a job. Right. And this is like, we, we know where we stand. Because like, they're the only two that's a couple that are separated. Right. Like Wayne and Mia Goth are on the couch together. Kid Cudi and Brittany Snow are on the couch together. Them mm-hmm. two, there's a huge gap between them two. Yeah. Oh. And like you said, if RJ would just come out and say hey i don't want you to be taken advantage of mm-hmm. uh, like you know we we're the crew we agreed for this we didn't agree to that but she throws it back in his face of like the story can't change halfway through well what about psycho that that's one of your favorite movies why can't it change halfway through right and i don't know i i would like to know her motivations more than maybe she's letting on because i don't think it's out of spite no just for rj but i don't know i, I would like to hear her talk about it and that's what I, I that's one of my issues with the movie is i feel like they start to broach a lot of topics and then sort of move on mm-hmm. so like for the first hour, aside from a couple of like really lovely moments, I, I there's I don't feel like I have a ton to hold on to with these characters. I find the characters themselves to be entertaining, mm-hmm. but not necessarily interesting or or consistent in in their motivation. So why why do you think uh, she says she wants to be in the movie? I, I think she I think she is genuinely interested, or at least that's the that's the intent of the script. Mm-hmm. But it's yeah, I, I I just think that that that's kind of where it stops. Sure. I don't know that we get enough of her. It, it, it becomes more about a bunch of people arguing about her than than really getting to see what she wants and i that's what i think that's what you were saying right like you want to know more of why she changed her mind yeah i I think a conversation with her and wayne together would have been interesting or even her and kid cuddy i agree like the funny thing about this whole thing is she's like well i want to be in the movie the story can change why why can't it change Mm -hmm. wayne goes outside with a conversation with rj and when they come back in they're already getting prepared for a sex scene there's no changes to a script Uh there's no discussions about like why would this be happening all of a sudden like The, the one part that i i agreed with rj on was when he was just like yeah it doesn't make any sense we don't have that scene written <laughs> yes yes but like the funny maybe the funniest part of the movie to be is when they come back in and it's all in slow motion it's uh-huh. like devastating for rj and then you just see kid cuddy in the corner doing push-ups i, I fucking lost I did it too <laughs> with his striped towel <laughs> <sighs> it's so good it's so funny so good and her underwear should have said wednesday on it how about oh, yes. like perfect of a tie-in would that have said i don't i don't know man i i think when it comes to her she was kind of the one being bullied by everybody. Oh, interesting. Okay. Because she was like the outcast. She was like, you know, church mouse and everything. So you think she was trying to like show that she can hang? Yeah. Kind of yeah. that. Interesting. But I think she's also probably the smartest one in the room. Oh, yes. she's definitely the smartest one in the room. So. <laughs> There's also that weird shot though where like we get a close up of her taking off her cross necklace as Dude. if to say porn is your god now. I like, loved it. I loved it. The uh, cross coming off was so funny. It. it I don't know if it was a, a hat on a hat with the, the Sunday underwear. It but is. like the <laughs> cross with the cross was enough for me i was sure. like yeah this is hilarious <laughs> but no i do i think you're maybe it's a little bit of all those things right mm-hmm. she's being bullied into it because she's the church mouse as they call her and then also she sees the hypocrisy and everything rj saying and britney snow kid cuddy all of them are making convincing arguments of sure it. like why wouldn't you want to be involved in this? Like, I think that's how she's kind of seeing it at the end of the day. You know what I mean? Right. Well, Brittany Snow, the whole movie has been talking up, but this is the, this is what's going to finally make me a star. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, and so there's this idea that maybe th- that'll go further than this. Yeah. But I, I do think that like the, the, it does get a little bit muddied here. Yeah. Uh, but I, I, yeah, I see what you're saying though. I find that mud interesting though. Like I like <laughs> that we don't get a one-to-one answer about it. Sure. And also I, I think I, I can't remember who says, it. I think it's uh, RJ who says it is, possible to make a good dirty movie uh-huh and i'm like yeah his name is paul verhoeven he makes fantastic <laughs> dirty movies sure. so paul verhoeven you are not rj but I, I i appreciate you calling out the king like that uh-huh. <laughs> uh so many good lines up until this point too like when they first get to the ranch and britney snow says uh oh we're here finally i'm so horny and you just hear kid cutty go you're always horny <laughs> <laughs> so many good lines that's my future fiance you're eyeballing there so hey howard come on now it's so funny and then, like, just other little lines, like, f- the first line Mia Goss has is, you're a fucking sex symbol. <laughs> <laughs> It's so good because, like, Ty West, I feel like, really understands the medium he's playing with sure. and, like, the timeline and everything. Because before they shoot, shoot the first porn scene, Wayne says, right before that shot, he says, time to give people what they came here to see. Uh-huh. Smash cut to a topless Britney Snow. Like, it's <laughs> it's so well. And they do that a couple of times. Sure. Like, it's so well done. 
And speaking of foreshadowing, you know, Wayne talks about people's eyes are going to pop out of their skull when they see this. Uh-huh. Kid Cudi says, I've been shot at by enough farmers when I was in Vietnam for a lifetime. Mm-hmm. Like, it's all it's all really, really well done. Like, you can tell there was some care in, like, the choices of lines. RJ goes, well, you might as well just stab me in the neck a bunch of times. Yeah. He says yeah. that. <laughs> well, cut my head off with a knife. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I like it. I like all of it. And then... <laughs> When uh, Maxine first sees Pearl uh-huh. up up in the house in the window, and then she's in the car window, uh-huh. I thought that was interesting because like the car door's open, the window's down, she's got the whole world open to her. Pearl is is locked in in the house, you know what I mean? Right. With the closed window, I thought that all this stuff was very well tastefully done, much more than you see in normal normal slashers like that. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I just I love the sequence with the uh, the the wide shot with the gator coming uh, up behind her. Yeah, I think it's I like fantastic. So good. And, Never put my. I would never get in that water in a million years. No, no, you cannot pay me to get into any body of water in Texas. You're gonna get tetanus from that before you get a fucking you know from a nail. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, okay. Let's talk about the nail. I found the nail to be so unnecessary. Uh-huh. Like I, I, I don't know. Like it's just it's literally just sitting there. There's no. Uh, sh- we don't see that that shot earlier. Uh-huh. Nobody talks about stepping on anything. I just thought it was so weird that there's just a nail. I just think that's what you get for using the phrase female unironic true true <laughs> but like I, 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 his wayne's death is kind of the only one that i'm like huh yeah like why did that happen i know all all the deaths in this movie i think are fantastic for the most part wayne's is probably the least interesting rj's blood splattering onto the headlights and then pearl doing her little dance is one of my favorite moments in the movie yeah. dude she does the fucking michelle williams dance from the fablemans it was so fucking crazy <laughs> <laughs> i was like what are we doing that's great what i are we love doing it here? I can't believe she damn near, she basically decapitates them by just stabbing them multiple times in the neck. Yeah. There's no cutting. It's just stab that's a lot. That's she's she's not as frail as she is putting on. That's a lot. <laughs> Yeah, I, what do you guys feel about? We talked about Landside. What do you feel about "Don't Fear the Reaper" playing? I'm I'm sick of that song at this same, point. Yes. Same. My note is slashers can't use this song anymore. Yeah, yeah. I mean Halloween Ends did it too. I know. Uh, well, let's not talk about Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we have. We've already done it for about two hours. So don't worry about that. So the part where Corey is on the bike. <laughs> yeah, just not for me. No, nah, not for me either. There's so much good stuff in this movie. Like even like like we talked about the homages to Texas Chainsaw yeah. with Wayne. From the inside of the house, looking out at the mesh screen at Wayne in the doorway, Gosh. I thought it was really great. If an old man, if you're already up scared, and an old man tells you to go down into the cellar, yeah, do you do it? Nope, no, no, right? I'm like, you come, you come <laughs> with me, buddy, or you can give me the flashlight you got, and then you can go get that one because you know where it's at. Yeah, it depends on the old man. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's fair. What old, what old man could talk you into? Is there anyone you got in mind? Or yes, Clint Eastwood. <laughs> Clint Eastwood, I would be terrified to do. No, I'm sure. not going anywhere near anything. No, nowhere near it. No, wouldn't want to be that empty chair. <laughs> do you guys remember that? You remember Clint Eastwood just screamed at a chair? Yeah. Oh no, no. You don't. You don't have to ask if we remember the empty chair. I think that's mostly what Clint Eastwood is known for now. <laughs> no, I I love the like the shadow of Pearl's old lady waddle in the barn. Oh my god, she's got the pitchfork. It's like ah oh, yes, the best way to hide a body: cover it in hay. <laughs> a little bit of hay. She throws just a um, little bit of hay on top, and I was like. Like, it's this is, so funny. It's funnier than anything Michael Myers did in the last Halloween movie. Like, <laughs> it's so good. What are those holes on the side of the bar for other than to put a pitchfork? Th- okay, there you go. Oh, it's a pr- oh, I don't like the applications of that. There's just glory <laughs> holes on this barn? Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, thanks. Oh. Bro, uh, have you been to Texas? <laughs> <laughs> the glory hole capital of the world. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't put this together until this watch, but the guy that's down in the basement that's got his pants around his ankles. Yeah. He was just a sex slave, right? Right. For Pearl? It's, it's the guy from the milk carton. Yes. It is the guy from the, milk, the carton, milk carton, but yeah. I didn't put it together that that's why he was... I thought it was just they put his body down there to hide him, but I didn't put together that he was... Because on the first watch, I was so taken aback by everything. I didn't realize Howard is kind of just bringing people to Pearl to please her. Right. Because mm-hmm. he's worried about his heart. Dude, uh, his, his heart giving out. It's so... To, we'll get that when we get there, but it is... It's such a funny premise and setup. Like It's so I fucked. I couldn't take it. Yeah. So I guess that's a that's a good segue into the conversation about what this movie is like the themes of this movie what it's about is sure at some point you will become as society deems you undesirable yeah. because time has taken you and how does how do the elderly deal with that right right and I think the sex scene amplifies that well I also feel like it it gets muddied when like, this is a person who keeps <laughs> prisoners in their basement yeah. so this is not like a normal person who is like 
dealing with the ravages of time and societal ills and sure so i'm just like it, it does in, in my head i'm like well what are we saying it, it, it's more interesting to me if like something else had happened to this person and maybe that maybe maybe pearl will illuminate that for yeah, me yeah but- i was gonna say i i think once you see pearl this movie will be in a new light for you interesting <laughs> okay but like i i think it is interesting because it's like you know i think just on a very plain general sense of a sense of uh like just how we feel about it i do think most of us don't want to think about the elderly having sex right mm-hmm. and like why can't they have sex there there's i mean <laughs> sure. listen audience your grandparents fuck yeah okay? yeah deal with it oh come on man <laughs> Colby, your grandparents fuck no like like stds are more prevalent in old folks homes you yes. took the words right out of my mouth i was just about to say that like, herpes is running wild yeah. at the homes. the homes but i i think it's not that we don't want old people to have sex it's we don't want to see it right <laughs> because one th- one thing i'll say is the sex scene between Howard and Pearl in the in the cottage uh-huh. in the movie theaters gets laughs, sure. it gets groans, but nobody's doing that when Britney Snow is getting railed by Kid Cudi. Right, like nobody's doing that when Kid Cudi and Mia Goth are together. So it's like it's not that we don't want to see sex; it's we only want to see sex with desirable people, right? Well, and, and she says all these scenes, or she says all these lines yes. about how like I used to look like that, and it used to be okay that I was you know sexual, and yeah. you used to give me everything I wanted. Yeah, I'm not. I don't feel special anymore. I, I, and this is why I say maybe. You you're the instance we're seeing Pearl will illuminate things better in this movie because uh-huh. like for me I didn't I didn't need that but I can definitely see why you why you're like well what are we doing here why is this what's this character's motivations and like why I, I get all oh, that I, yeah I don't need all of that I'm just saying if we're doing if if we're exploring these themes of how we like throw the elderly out on their ass mm-hmm. or or these ideas of like it's not a great movie but like one of the things that works about M. Night Shyamalan's The Visit is that people constantly blow off the idea idea that these elderly people are terrifying yeah. because they're like well you're just you just think that because you're afraid of old people yeah. you know <laughs> like yeah. and and I think that's an interesting idea but if you kind of cross pollinate it with this idea of well she's also a psychopath yeah. then I kind of lose any kind of pity I'm I'm maybe meant to feel for this character exactly well I, I think that's why it's a good little switch that at the end we're uh-huh. like oh these aren't just old people that are like you know just being weird no they're actual deviants so then maybe I needed the reveal of the guy in the basement a little later yeah maybe i don't know you never want to reveal the guy in your basement too early (laughs) that's what i'm saying that's a fourth date tops I think the scene of the first the first time they're shooting anything for the farmer's daughter that's not the porn scene where it's Kid Cunny coming to the house hey my car died or whatever and oh yeah uh-huh. being cut perfectly with Maxine and Pearl in the house yeah. like I think that's maybe the second best scene of the movie because yeah. it's really like good. I do really like that the lemonade drinking and like clearly Mac, uh, Mia Goth is just trying to drink it as quickly as possible to get her and get out of there I love that mm-hmm. I, she's she's li- literally like I'm trying to be polite but also like get the fuck out of here mm-hmm. and then it's you know Britney Snow coming on to Kid Cudi and uh-huh. at the same time Pearl is coming on to Maxine and like the two total totally different reactions yes. to that yeah like it's so well done like it's it is interesting that it just plays into our subconscious of like yeah I don't want to see old people being flirtatious and sexual but like why can't they be but Howard also still clearly believes that she's beautiful yeah. or like sees her as beautiful yeah. like and that's there's that great moment where he he gets mad at Jackson is like you you come around here enticing my wife and Jackson just thinks that's bonkers He's like, yeah. I love that response. He's like, yeah. Well, okay. <laughs> I mean, it's really good. Jackson, Jackson might be my favorite character in the movie, man. Just he's so good. Every he's so chill. Mm-hmm. On like doing the push-ups was the funniest shit. Him flexing in the window. He's there to work. He's so good. He's there to work. He's dedicated to the shoot. So good. He's dedicated to the shoot. You're right. <laughs> and just, I guess, let's talk about his death because it's the one I find the most troubling. I mean, I know it's a horror movie, uh-huh. but like, it is. Like I said, it's interesting that these characters all go out of their way to at least try to help Pearl and Howard to an extent at some point. Mm-hmm. And Kid Cudi's out there in his skibbies in the swamps where, you know, there could be all kinds of stuff. And he's a Vietnam vet. He says, I'm doing this not for country, but for, you know, whatever he says. He's like, uh-huh. for. And Howard clearly was a veteran too. And it's like, I don't see it as a racist thing because he never, there's never any sense of racism in this movie. With- but it's also, it's impossible to avoid the iconography and those implications even if that's not even if that's not like what's in the script absolutely like, yeah that's why i find it troubling it's impossible to avoid and, and i'm glad it's an off-screen kind of death yeah, like we I don't agree. see 
Because when you show an old white man in the 70s pointing a rifle at a black man, it's yep. just like, ah, oh, I don't like this. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And it's the death that makes me the saddest of all the characters. I'm like, I li- I think Jackson was maybe, aside from maybe Jenna Ortega, maybe the one with the best heart yeah. in the movie. Yeah. It's really upsetting. It just loves the work. It's a good movie, the fact that it makes me feel that in a slasher. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. For me, in the second half of the movie is when I started to see like the better sides of some of these characters. Mm-hmm. Like Jackson is sort of like, just kind of chill and hanging out until then. And then he, you know, puts his neck on the line to try to find Pearl. Mm-hmm. And it's, you know, it's the same thing you mentioned with Wayne earlier. He actually goes out and looks, which seems against everything his character was before this. Yeah. I have a question. Sure. Why are they having Jenna Ortega be the one that's operating the boom mic? Because <laughs> she's the she's the smallest. Uh-huh. And I don't know if you guys have ever had to. Mally, I know you've had to, but like operating a boom mic is hard. It's exhausting. It's immediately exhausting. Yeah. Like the second you pick it up, you're like, oh, oh. <laughs> Dude, that's the thing though. Every boom op I know tiny little son bitch really <laughs> yes really small and lean yeah i just i i i don't know i was like this poor girl's arms she's gonna be exhausted That's funny. Like, i guess they had to just give her a reason to be there <laughs> no 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 I, sure. I mean i get that but i'm like it's just fun it's a bit of great bit of comedy that like she's the smallest one and she's gonna be the one doing the biggest heavy lifting like <laughs> i thought it was really good do you think i i saw this notice this on the rewatch when they're filming uh mia goss sex scene in the barn Mm -hmm. and jen ortega clearly has a different view of maxine than she does uh britney snow's character was jen ortega actually getting turned on by this by maxine i think that's the implication like this is like she's finally seeing what's fun about this or something got it yeah i I thought it was weird that like we have that and then the next scene with her is her being like how could you guys do that like it felt like a weird yeah there's also a few like interesting references to maybe Maxine being just better at having sex on camera. Yeah. <laughs> like there's a few different references to her being like, well, she's a natch. Like, That's yeah. true. I, I, yeah. Britney Snow is much more theatrical uh-huh. and like playing it up and Mia Goth is much more sensual about it. So I definitely, definitely get that. I don't know. I, I, I noticed it on the first time. I thought that was interesting. Sure. Because there's a lot of uh, like fluidity in this movie. Like mm-hmm. I didn't put it together till this time either that Pearl <laughs> went both ways, I guess. Yeah. Until she's like, I don't want the girl in the basement or the guy I want. She's not, you know, she's not my type. Yeah. I think is what she says. Yeah. I thought it was interesting. I, di- I didn't put that together on the first watch. Do you think Jenna Ortega just did one take when she cuts through the door? Like she put her face up and went, here's Jenna. Oh my God. <laughs> There's probably an outtakes reel that's got that going I hope on. so. Yeah. Wasted opportunity otherwise. This is also the second movie back to back where someone's had a tiny hatchet. And it's a woman defending herself from a man because mm-hmm. uh-huh. men did the same exact thing. <laughs> I also thought it was crazy to for this movie to show that uh, we hadn't invented food until the 2000s because <laughs> these people eating bologna sandwiches and beer on this porn set. That they just leave oh, out on the counter. <laughs> oh, I can't think of a worse. I, I mean, I could probably think of a worse food, yeah. but like just in the 70s, just hot mayonnaise and God. hot beer with a bologna. Ugh. When they get taken to the to have their autopsies done and they're just full of milk and bologna. Oh. <laughs> 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 That's the scariest part of the movie. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's, uh, I, I thought this whole scene, like we talked about, uh, about already, the landslide scene was great. Yeah. I still think it's a bold choice. It, you you ride a very thin line with putting that song in any Anything. movie. Anything, yes. Yeah. RJ also gives the worst uh, part of the cheer here because they all do a toast and he says, to the power of independent cinema. I'm like, Jesus Christ, dude, give it a rest. Uh-huh. Give it a rest. We all know that guy, though. Yeah. I do like that also Jen Ortega kind of hints that like she also wants to be in the porn because Kid Cudi is clearly packing. <laughs> She's like, people aren't coming to see this for the story. They're coming to see it for the tits and ass. Dot, dot, dot. And a really big dick. <laughs> uh-huh. The reveal of him in the doorway with the with the swinging cock yeah. is unbelievable. <laughs> I love his confidence. Uh-huh. I mean, I, I would be too if I was hacking like that, but like just him to open the door, like, what's up, old time? <laughs> <laughs> and that's why Jackson's the best. He's the best. <laughs> it's the best part of the movie. Yeah, what, where do we want to go from here? I'm just skimming through my notes. We've kind of been jumping around a little bit, but I think my my next note is the is like the last little bit of the movie. Okay. Let's get into it. So Jenny Ortega's locked in a basement, guys. Oh, we're going that far back. Jeez. All right. <laughs> Man, I was not ready for her to get just fucking blasted in the oh face. Oh, my God. Also, one of the funniest moments of the movie. <laughs> that legitimately made me jump. Yeah, me too. I was not expecting her to just get fucking blasted. I howled. It's both shocking and kind of hilarious. Like, the second time watching it, like, the wire, like, clearly she's getting some, like, stunt work happening there some wire work to pull her out man it's a funny funny 
But then <laughs> when they're when Howard's dragging the body back in and she gurgles uh-huh. and he just gives has a, a heart, heart attack. attack. Chekhov's heart attack. Pretty funny. <laughs> it's so fucking funny. <laughs> oh, I do love I do love setting up that that gun doesn't work also. Uh-huh. Like I've got I've got an unloaded gun in my glove compartment. Yeah. Yeah. And I also like that he's like, look, I've done this before. We got to bring her inside because that way it's self-defense. Yeah. Like, we can't we can't play this game. <laughs> yeah. Because we didn't know what blood splatter was in the 70s. Uh-huh. Right. <laughs> they still don't in Texas. <laughs> I'm really going after Texas this episode. Get fucked. <laughs> just put that on the list of states that we just, uh, for some reason, we have a beef with. Yeah. It's it's because I keep picking beefs. <laughs> um, I'm hungry. Anyway. Mm, bologna. <laughs> oh, <laughs> What's God, bologna and some no. Beer? <laughs> so then Maxine, like, grabs the keys, like, is threatening to shoot Pearl, pulls the trigger, nothing. Pearl grabs the shotgun and shoots. Holy shit. Misses and launches herself out the fucking <laughs> front door. Oh, so my good. God. I've never laughed that fucking hard. When it comes to the guns... The old man said his shotgun was empty, right? Yeah, I guess he was. I think it he was. It, it, it wasn't the the pistol in the in the van. They both said they were unloaded. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. You just wave it at someone. Yeah. The old man says it's not loaded anyway, and then and then Wayne says, "Yeah, I got one of those in the glove compartment. I know what you mean." So it's kind of swapped. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah a little bit. But I think I think Howard was lying. Yeah. Yeah. One hundred percent. And then motherfucking Pearl backs it up you know what i'm like oh maxine backs it up you mean over pearl what did i say <laughs> you said pearl but I, I get the mix up i'm getting the two movies com- uh-huh. it's the same fucking actress uh-huh. <laughs> so mia goth backs it up over mia goth mm-hmm. <laughs> and yeah it pops splat oh, good dude the fucking noise it makes when she pops her yeah, head it's good it's good holy shit did it feel weird to anybody else that like Maxine seems to feel nothing about everybody being dead. Yeah. Well, I, I feel like she plays it a little bit cool because like when she goes to rescue Jen Ortega, uh-huh. Jen Ortega's screaming her head off and she's like, look, you got to keep it down. And she goes, don't tell me to be quiet. Sure. And then she sprints out and gets the gun to the face. So I sure. feel like she is trying to play it cool. But also she is so hopped up on coke. Yes, that's true. This whole ending of this movie. So yes. <laughs> that's, that makes, yeah, that's fair. Well, I don't think Maxine really gives a damn about much either. She just wants to be famous. That's yeah, true. So. I, she's, see, this is where seeing Pearl will kind of also maybe put a little bit of Maxine into perspective for you, Nathan, a because bit. Interesting. I think she's got a little bit of that in her too, uh, of like, I'm, I'm a star and you're right. I, cause she, she has her mantra. Her, that mantra comes from her father mm-hmm. who was the, television preacher man sure mm-hmm. the only show in town the only channel <laughs> only show in town yeah she just she kind of just drives out to the sunset kind of like uh the uh texas chainsaw but on a happier kind of <laughs> ending for her right but uh it's an interesting like maxine's character is kind of the least developed honestly out of all of them yeah oddly enough but that's kind of intentional because of her doing double duty as Pearl and like their two characters being like mirror images of one another. Like it's interesting when Pearl calls Maxine a whore and it's, and then she says, you're just like me. Mm-hmm. Right. Like it's, I don't know. I, there was a lot, there's, there's a lot of symbolism there and like so much of Pearl's story is also Mia Goss story. That's why I'm interested to see where Maxine takes things, uh-huh. the, the next movie in the trilogy. But I also like when Howard is having his heart attack. She's like, give me the car keys. And Pearl says, he's having a heart attack. I don't give a shit. Yeah. <laughs> like, exactly. I don't give a shit that your murderous husband's dying. Fucking mm-hmm. deserved it. Such an innocuous way to die. Like, just a little bit of blood girl. And the guy's like, oh, oh, oh. It's so attack. good, though. I love it. <laughs> it's it's funny. The, the killers kind of kill themselves uh-huh. just because of old age. It's really funny. Also, Pearl's death is kind of foreshadowed, too, because uh, Howard says, I'm worried she's going to uh, fall. Break her hip, hip. Yeah. Yep. 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 And sure enough, hip broken. <laughs> and she's so good in all of this. Mm-hmm. Like, Mia Goth is unbelievable. Like, she's, even after watching her do all of this shit, when she says, I think I broke my hip, I, like, there's a part of me that's like, fucking shit, help her sit up or no. something. <laughs> like, it's so crazy. Nah. That's how good she is. I don't know. What, what I wrote about it, I'm like, man, take those boots to her face. I don't <laughs> care. what I thought she was going to do. <laughs> yeah. And then she had the better idea of using the car. Takes a fucking truck to her face. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Which is reminiscent of uh, when they uh, are on the way to the barn earlier and they pass the cow that got hit. Drive yeah. over the, uh, the cows, yeah. And they run over the guts. And Wayne's got that great line of just when you uh, thought you escaped the slaughterhouse. Uh-huh. It's really well done. This movie, this is a good script. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> for a horror movie, that's a, that's a slasher playing out these tropes. It's a very well done, very well done homage to all that stuff. Pretty good. Pretty good. I feel like it had a, a really good runtime, too. Anything oh, yeah. Over two hours for like a 
for a movie like this is just too much. Right. Yeah, I agree. And that that last half is like only like 40 minutes. Mm-hmm. So it's it, it kind of like the pacing is really good. It's almost the exact like midpoint. Mm-hmm. It's like uh, it's like 53 minutes before the first kill. And I think you've got 45 minutes to go or something yeah. like that. That sounds about right. The pacing is incredible. Maxine's mantra throughout the whole movie is uh, I will not accept a life I do not deserve, uh-huh. which it's a good line, but also like it's kind of the worst like character trait uh-huh. is because is all she talks about is I need better things. Right. I deserve more. And I'm like, which is exactly what Pearl keeps saying, right? Yes. Like, I want to be special. You're I, you know, I know I never get to do what I want anymore. Yeah. And I, I don't know. It's just like it almost felt like it was like taking a shot at boomers, too, of like, <laughs> I deserve more. I uh-huh. I did things I deserve. And I'm like, oh, you don't deserve shit. Yeehaw. Yeah. Yeehaw. You don't deserve shit. And Mac- Mia Goth, for all we see in this movie, uh-huh. does nothing like she she doesn't deserve anything. And she like I said, I'm very curious to see where the, the final chapter of this. And she only survives because of the kickback from that shotgun. Yeah. yeah. She doesn't do anything like uh-huh. yeah, I'm. I'm very curious as to what Maxine's going to be. Oh, it's set in the eighties. We know that. And it's set in Hollywood. So it's going to be, it's going to be, I'm hoping we get some Brian De Palma kind of homages. Hmm. Like something like that would be interesting. Like, um, body double or something like that would be an interesting way to take this, this trilogy. Right. Cool. Is there anything else we forgot to talk about? And (laughs) moving on (laughs) that smash cut to the, to the, uh, the baby dolls is upsetting with Pearl brushing her hair. Uh Yeah. Nathan, do you watch this movie with your pops? (laughs) No, I did. Damn, you gotta show it to him. No, I I did send him just the screenshot of Cuddy. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. <laughs> Oh, we we didn't talk about Brittany Snow getting the gator. Oh, sure. How we feel about that? It's a good it's a good death for sure. <laughs> it's a good death, and then Pearl's little button on it with just the soft bitch. <laughs> I love that. So good. That's really good. But even Brittany Snow's character, for as obnoxious as she is, she does try to help Pearl. She, she puts does. a blanket over her and everything. Yeah. Like I don't know. I I mean, I get the whole point of horror movies is you watch the villain kill the innocent quote unquote victims, but like these people seemed like good people for the most part, like to an extent. For nineteen seventies Texas, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> sure. So it's a it's it's upsetting actually watching them die which i i hope like because this is as far from something like men that we talked about last week or things like that where like this is the kind of movie that i don't think is quote unquote elevated horror i think this is just horror with a message but it's a message that's pretty broad and right. like I don't, I, this is what i'm more looking for than something like men i gotta say like this conversation has kind of turned me around on a lot of it oh. i'd like to give it another watch okay I, I think that, like what you're saying, there's a lot of stuff that's kind of broad, and I didn't particularly latch onto most of the characters on the first viewing. Mm-hmm. So maybe this is one that gets better as I as I watch it, kind of knowing what it's going to be. You know, yeah, I, I think you definitely should see Pearl. And then and then go back to this. I think I that'll really shape. And Pearl may be the movie that you're kind of looking for with with this kind of a setting and everything. Yeah. See, I'm very curious to hear Nathan's thoughts on Pearl. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'll give it a watch. I mean, like, I I didn't walk away from this movie disliking it. I, it just sort of was like I was sort of like this is neither fish nor fowl. I'm mm-hmm. not a, a totally sure you know w- what I'm supposed to be getting from the the message here. And so now I yeah I would like to give it another shot. All right. So like X, I felt like was more of a 70s 60s slasher uh-huh. chainsaw you know kind of vibe mm-hmm. pearl i did not really leave the movie thinking it was a slasher kind of film at all no it's not it's it's much it feels more like um drama suspense kind i was of. gonna say singing in the rain but you give the main character an axe <laughs> uh okay yeah. i'm in yeah, a little bit a little bit <laughs> i thought that i thought that might get nathan <laughs> <laughs> it, it felt more more stephen king ish to me interesting okay like it's clearly about a person with something not right in the head about her. And uh-huh. then like, how does the world react to that? Like, okay. that's kind of how I felt about it. Cool. It's not a bad movie. I just, it's X is so much better to me. Kind of a, a Forrest Gump vibe in Pearl. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> a little okay. bit. A little bit. With an axe. With an axe. You're right. Yeah. Also, uh, we, we didn't even touch on the score is really good. In oh, this. It's, it's great. Like, it's very sparing. But uh, I mean, Tyler Bates, he can't miss. Mm-hmm. Tyler Bates and Chelsea Wolf working on this together. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I think that's everything. One last thing I wanted to like to say, and this is another nod to the movie Pearl, but yeah. when her and Howard are in the bed right before their sex scene, and she says, tell me I'm special. And uh-huh. I'm like, man, after you see that movie, that line uh, <laughs> <laughs> means means something totally different. Oh, boy. Like, <laughs> okay. It's, it's, it is interesting that this movie can be so, like, things can t- turn so quickly because you've seen the the second one like it puts things into a whole new context 
And it makes it more challenging, I think. Like, I don't know how I feel <laughs> about Pearl the person anymore. Uh, Which order would you recommend watching it in? If you haven't seen either of them? The machete order. The, the machete <laughs> order. Uh, I think you go uh, A New Hope, uh, and then Empire Strikes Back. Pearl. Pearl. Rogue One. <laughs> uh, no, I think this is the right order. I think X and then Pearl. And then Machete. Yeah, and then Machete <laughs> kills. I'd be interested to see someone who watches the other order, but I don't know. I feel like this would be the right one. And then just to top it all off, Endgame. Yeah, absolutely. You gotta see how it wraps up. Sure. You think Pearl got snapped? <laughs> no. Okay. Absolutely not. All right. I did like Pearl's after her death. You get the smash cut to the TV. And now that's what I call divine intervention. Yeah. <laughs> sure. So good. Um. Yeah, I think that's everything I got. Is there anything we forgot to talk about before we get into the wrap up stuff here? I don't think so. All right. No, I'm excited. Well, let's talk about Prop Cop. And for new listeners of the show, Prop Cop is where we look at all of the props in the movie. X. Uh, yeah. We look at all the props of the movie and we each take one for ourselves. And a prop can be anything physical or tangible. Uh, Kobe, you're our guest on this episode. Mm-hmm. Why don't you tell me what prop you want from the movie? X. <laughs> I want to see what the, the tape that the cops found ended up. Oh, oh sure. Yeah. Okay. Fucked up horror picture. Okay. Uh, Mally, what about you? Uh, Kid Cudi's blue suit. Oh, oh it's so it's a good. good. It's fucking styling. It's a good suit. Great choice. Uh, Nathan? Uh, I want a glass of that lemonade. Hey. It didn't look, it, the color was a little off, but <laughs> hey, it, it looks like it went down smooth. Yeah, t- <laughs> I don't know what this character is that I'm doing. It's like, is there a version of this movie with Joe Pesci in it? <laughs> <laughs> I want the, the marker, ah, the clapboard nice. uh, that they use for the farmer's daughter. Yeah. I thought that'd be really cool to have. Oh, can I choose one more? Sure. I want the script for the farmer's daughter because okay. I gotta see what that shit reads like. <laughs> you gotta read that shit, yeah. I'm surprised it was that thick, honestly. That's a long porn. It looked like it was 16 pages double spaced. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, what about bit part, uh, which may be a difficult segment for oh, this movie, but I got one. Me too. Bit part is where we look at all the extra actors in the movie, like all the side characters, preferably ones that don't have a name, and we recast them as each of ourselves. Uh-huh. Nathan, what about you? Who is your bit part? I want to be one of those cows in the field, just minding my own business. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Just eating grass and shitting all day. That's Nathan's dream life. <laughs> it is. <laughs> what about you, Mallory? Uh, I'll be the dead guy in the basement. Ooh, with, the, with the, your uh, pants around your ankle? <laughs> yeah. He kind of had a beard like you used to have, for sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I want to be the uh, fat guy that's just shoveling the cow guts off the road. Yeah. <laughs> Once again, dream life. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, you're shoveling bits of Nathan off the road. That's right. No, no, no. Not Nathan. Nathan's buddies. Yeah. But, no. yeah. Fuck Nathan's friends. <laughs> uh, what about you, Kobe? Man, I already said I resonated with RJ earlier, and I, I don't like that. <laughs> um, just put me in the gas station. Oh, the gas station attendant? Yeah. Okay. okay. The one that seems so annoyed by these people and just wants them to get the fuck in and then get out? <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. All right. Buy our Wonder Bread and leave. That's how he feels when we ask him to be on the episode. <laughs> no. <laughs> Want to no. get in and get the fuck out. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, fellas, uh, we got to talk about it. The silver lining. We've got to. We got to do it. It's part of our uh, contracts. Uh-huh. We got to talk about the silver lining for X. Pac. <laughs> How does that get forgotten so quick? I de- yeah, I do. I legit forget it every time. And then yeah. it comes back. And you guys could see the soundboard, so I don't know. I don't know. The mouse. The mouse hovers over the play bud, but oh, I don't. My whenever we start recording, my eyes roll back in my head and I go into a trance, oh, so I okay. can't see the soundboard. You're like the human calculator from Dune. You just you're just doing calculations. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> like that guy. The content must flow. <laughs> All right. So who wants to go first? There's silver lining for the movie. I'll go. Okay. Wayne didn't get tetanus. Hey, I did think it'd be funny if like, that's just where that his character ended. Like we just <laughs> left him there and he, he did die of tetanus. The post credit scene is him. <laughs> He's dead on a slab. And they're like, ah, oh, tetanus got him. Oh, yeah. oh tetanus. Uh, what about you, Mally? The alligator isn't hungry anymore. There oh, you go. There you go. Uh, Kobe? I don't know, man. I'm... <sighs> I guess Maxine's the only one that made it out mm-hmm. alive through all this. That's and silver like, lining. Sh- she gets to continue trying to be a star. Yeah. Once that tape makes it out in the world, I guess. Absolutely. Oh, that's an interesting idea. Yeah. The, the idea that the tape would get out there and then maybe become like its own kind of sensation. Yeah. That I'm I'm sure that'll probably play into at least some aspect of Maxine. Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, my silver lining is that Howard and Pearl got what they fucking deserved. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah. Okay, Joker. <laughs> yeah, they got their one last nut in. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's beautiful. That's beautiful. That was the original title of this one. One last nut. <laughs> uh, um, last nut and so 
Soho. <laughs> I've got two others, just little minor ones. It happened one nut. Uh, okay. Okay, <laughs> fellas. A nut to remember. Okay, okay I'm done. Uh, uh, RJ's movie will certainly be avant-garde. So yeah. he's got that going for him. Sure. Uh, and uh, the family of the man in that basement will finally get some answers about what happened to him. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. yeah. My family's going to be so happy. They're going to be so happy to find out that I uh, have been used as a sex slave for an old woman. <laughs> Oof. It's the only way his life could have turned out. <laughs> we did talk about that's also a good little nod to Psycho, the car stuck in the swamp. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, true. Uh-huh. Nice. Yeah. Let's say this. Let's say you watched the movie X. and oh, uh, you weren't too upbeat at the end of it. Uh-huh. Uh, you were a little dour. What's a movie people can double feature with X. that will uh, I'm mad. <laughs> bring them back up and put them in a better mood? Uh-huh. Uh, why don't we start with Kobe? Kobe, what's your double feature to pair with? X. Oh, man. He went for the fucking hat trick. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Let me think about it. Let me think about it. Okay. What about you, Mally? Uh, I'm going to go with another Kid Cudi feature. Mm. Ooh. Need for Speed. Bill and Ted face the music. <laughs> oh, yeah. okay. That's a fun one. All right. He does technically play himself, but it counts. No, for <laughs> yes. sure. Nathan, what about you? Um, I went with another movie about uh, elderly people finding themselves in a home away from home. I went with The Best Exotic Marigold Hotel. Okay. All right. A very uh, wholesome as fuck movie. Yeah. Wait, Dustin. Yeah, yeah. I have another one. Hit me with it three times. Wait a minute. X, X, X. Triple X, our Infinity <laughs> Soul. Oh, there you go. State of the Union. Oh, no. The Return of Xander Cage. I went with another movie about uh, the elderly being abused and someone stepping on a nail in a terrible fashion. Oh, uh, <laughs> Happy Gilmore. I'm going to go with Home Alone. Yes. <laughs> Or a quiet place, whichever you want to do. There's nail stepping on going on in that movie too. I'm telling you, dude, Happy Gilmore fits too. Yep, yep. Uh, Kobe, you, you thought of one? Yeah. All right. Pitch Perfect. All right. There you go. That, that's a fun. That's a fun. I've one. actually never seen any of those movies. Pitch Perfect. I haven't either. Nathan, I as- I assume you're a pitchy. Uh, I liked the first one when it came out. Didn't particularly enjoy the sequels, but I also I gotta say, like fans of Pitch Perfect tend to be the worst. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. All right. Uh, well, we try, we try to do this with horror movies when we cover them on the show. Best kill. Oh, sure. What do you guys got? What do you guys think? Oh, man. Oh, for me, it's it, it's Wayne getting killed and then covered up with like three inches of hay. <laughs> I, I legit like cackled. I got to give H- Howard's. Howard's death? Yeah. Okay. Do you think they find Wayne? Be- or maybe she buried him so well that they don't find him in the <laughs> <bar>? <laughs> Yeah, they fucking found Wayne. <laughs> <laughs> the cows ate him. <laughs> That's what that detective meant when he said, hey, you got to see something. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. I got to say, for me, it's Britney Snow's death. Uh-huh. Alligator is... Uh, that is pretty good. Uh, it's so good because it's Chekhov's alligator. I like Pearl just standing there and then Howard showing up being like, huh. Complete with like a death roll yeah. like from the alligator. It's it's intense. It went accurate. Yeah. We didn't talk about this too, but because this movie was shot in New Zealand, a lot of the special effects was done by Weta, who wow. did a lot of the Lord of the Rings stuff. Yeah. And uh, the stunt performer, I don't know, I have her name in front of me, but the, the stunt performer in the water with the animatronic gator is puts on a great performance. Uh-huh. Like it's, I feel that alligator attack it is visceral. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what about you, Kobe? Best kill? I really liked RJ's. Okay. Uh, just because of how effortlessly, like, she was just stabbing him over and over I and over. Almost like she just liked it. And I was like, yeah. I love the blood going onto the headlights and giving us some giallo lighting mm-hmm. for that scene, too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Ty West knows where he's coming from, for sure. Uh-huh. Uh, cool. Well, would we recommend... X. God <laughs> damn it. I, I would. Uh-huh. I-, I would... I I would I would say go in with an open mind and uh, and it's a uh, it's a trip I'm I'm looking forward to rewatching it. Mm-hmm. What about you, Malik? Oh, one hundred percent. Yeah, right on, Kobe. Yeah, that was one of my top recommended for twenty twenty two. Wow. Okay. I think if you like old school slashers, but you also pine for like a slow burn that uh-huh. kind of ramps up gradually, and you like that seventies low budget aesthetic, then uh-huh. yes. And if none of that is appealing to you, I think you can probably skip it. Mm. And if you don't like this, you might like Pearl. But if you do like this, then you might not like Pearl. Like I, I think Pearl is kind of divisive. Yeah, that's so fascinating to me because it's, it's a totally different kind of movie. Yeah, but like Turtles in Time. Yeah, absolutely. It <laughs> really changes <laughs> up the formula. Um, <laughs> what if in the third movie? What if in Maxine she finds a lamp that takes her back to feudal Japan? Like how? <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. How crazy would that be? Uh-huh. We bring Casey Jones back for a couple scenes. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Like, how do you feel about this in terms of... Because 2022 was a stellar year for horror. It was, yeah. Is this top five, maybe, of last year? Oh, man. Ooh. Top three? That's tough, because uh, there there were so many really great uh, indie horrors last year, mm-hmm. too. Mm-hmm. Of ones I saw, I think it would definitely be top five. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. I feel the same way. I was going to say, definitely, like, top 
15 yeah, Jesus. movies for me for the year. No, no, just, oh, 50, just movies of the year. Gotcha. Of the year. Yeah, gotcha. And I had a lot of horror with the year because, I mean, I thought Nope and Barbarian and Prey. Sure. Yeah, I thought all those. And Menu, if you guys haven't seen the Menu yet. Yeah, Menu was great. I haven't seen it yet. All those are really good. Yeah. No, I think X is great. I, I struggle to put it above. Uh, something like Skin and Marink and maybe even Barbarian. Mm. But no, it was a great year for horror. I, it was. I was really, and mostly in movies in general. And, and honestly, we're, we're already in a good year for horror mm-hmm. in 2023. I mean, there's a new Kevin Williamson movie that just came out like over the weekend. Oh, yeah. And Megan is crushing at the box office. Mm-hmm. And we've got Evil Dead Rise oh. coming up. Like, it's going to be a good year, and man. And fucking Cocaine Bear. Cocaine, cocaine bear. bear. I'm very excited for Evil Dead Rise. Oof. Me too. Well, listener, if you've got some thoughts on the movie, X. you can uh, email them to us at the silver linings playlist at gmail.com, or you could DM us on Instagram, Twitter, or even on TikTok if you want to leave a message for us there too. I think you could do that. Yeah. If not, you haven't already, follow us on those three places as well to get you know some behind the scenes info about the show, maybe some clips from the show every now and then. Maybe. And if you haven't already, please subscribe wherever you're listening to us at and leave us a rating and some feedback. We'd really appreciate that. Mm-hmm. Guys, I don't know if you saw it, but we are now down to a 4.9 on iTunes, which I thought was so funny we're oh, all the fucking has been at this point what did we do wrong <laughs> i don't know I, I don't know i don't know it's all of our fucking texas fans i swear <laughs> to god if you give us some feedback about the movie we'll uh read it on the show so do that if you want and uh please tell your friends and family about the show we'd really appreciate that uh we're loving all of the new listeners we're getting it's done wonders for us and we really appreciate it uh-huh cool so I think that wraps it up for uh X. but do you guys have any other little bits of notes or anything we forgot to talk about I don't. All right. <laughs> Motherfuckers doing accents all of a sudden. <laughs> Is that your New Zealand? <laughs> I, was, uh, I don't know. I think I tried to do Texas and New Zealand at the same time and got confused. That's, that's the movie right <laughs> there. Well, next week, uh, Nathan, yeah. is your pick. Yes. And we're getting into very different territory. <laughs> <laughs> so why don't you give us a clue for what we're talking about next week? I struggled to come up with a clue that was more clever, but I don't know that there's anything else I can say. Next week, we'll be back. Ooh. ooh. I fucking knew it. <laughs> do you actually know the movie this time? <laughs> I actually do. Okay. Only because I just looked at the schedule. <laughs> <laughs> well, Kobe, thank you for uh, coming on the show. It was yeah. great having you back. Yeah, man. Always fun. All right. And uh, stop listening to us and taking pictures while you're driving. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> How do you remember these things from like... <laughs> I forgot about that. Not long ago. I forgot about it. Hey, man. I'm the host of the show. I gotta remember. I was at a stoplight. It's okay. Oh, okay. The speedometer said you were going 60, but I'll take I'll take it. You know, take your word for it. Motherfucker. <laughs> taking notes on our guests <laughs> well uh rest in peace oatmeal and, and not a rest in peace to howard and pearl no nope. <laughs> no nope. not doing it and uh, as always i'm a fucking sex symbol <laughs> now that's what i call divine intervention Ooh. day and night <laughs> <laughs> i hate it here Ex- <laughs> excelsior 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 oh, look it up Jesus Christ, that was a long one. Uh, anyway, if you're still here, thanks for listening. And remember, you can always check out our back catalog for over 100 episodes of the show. Like, subscribe, and leave feedback if you want. And tune in next week for another one. Laters!